The framework of the Summit of the Americas held in the United States in the city of Los Angeles. Our correspondent, Aisa Garcia, our special envoy, interview with Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skerritt, where the high government official reiterated his nation's call to remove the embargo against Cuba. Here to be today with Mr. Roosevelt Scurry, the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Hi, it's a pleasure to be with you, Prime Minister. Can you tell us why do you decided to attend this summit? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on Telesu. Um, we decided to attend for a few reasons. One, to make our position very clear that the Summit of Americas uh, mandate all countries uh, to participate in a discussion uh, on issues confronting the hemisphere and that countries that have been left out uh, should have been invited so that they too can have their voice and the voice of the people heard. Uh, secondly is that we need to reiterate our call for the removal of the embargo against the people of Cuba. Uh, this has been there for a very long time. It has only brought uh, impoverishment and challenges uh, to the people of Cuba and it should be removed. The third point also is to is to call on the removal of Cuba from the list of state uh, sponsor of terrorism. Uh, to put Cuba on, the, on such a list is really um, laughable but it is too serious to laugh. And the other point is that we, Dominica, is um, from the south uh, but we also have friends in enough and we need to have the opportunity to engage ourselves on matters confronting the world. As we speak now, there is a serious crisis in the hemisphere with the high cost of fuel prices, the high cost of food, and even in some countries, even if you can afford to pay for the food supplies, access to it is becoming very challenging. And, and so and, and of course, you are still recovering from the pandemic. It, is, it hasn't gone away. It is still there. And, um, and therefore, we need, we need to have the collective voice of all countries. And in democracy, when we speak of democracy, um, it is also our ability to speak and to engage those whom we disagree with um, and to be able to hear their voices and the differing views and then together we can come up with a clear path forward that all of us can subscribe to, that all of us can call our own, and all of us as countries can move ahead with a commitment uh, to implementing them. So to, to not have some countries in the, in the, in the summit uh, really is, is making the ability of the summit even more difficult to arriving at concrete um, actions on the way forward. So you are disagreed on the exclusion of these three countries? Why? Uh, uh, firmly so. They're part of the hemisphere. When you, there's no way you can speak about healthcare and, and the pandemic and the management of the pandemic in the region without having Cuba at the table. Uh, Cuba, That's especially right. Cuba in the Caribbean, for example, in the Caribbean, every CARICOM country has benefited from the uh, support of Cuba in the with, with PPE, with medicine, and very importantly, with medical personnel, with nurses, with doctors, and with um, um, technicians to assist us in our fight against the pandemic. And, and so you have also um, countries like Venezuela. With, with a situation of high prices of oil, Venezuela has the capacity to produce and to, and to supply. And, and because what the world in now, needs now in our hemisphere is supply of petroleum products so that we can see a drop in the, in the price of petroleum products. Uh, which is making it very difficult for countries to survive in a post-pandemic or even an existing pandemic situation. Uh, so, so, so it, it is absolutely important that these countries should have been invited. Um, it, is, it, is, um, it is not usual that countries are excluded. Um, and as part of democracy, I said, you know, we agree to disagree on certain issues. But it's not because I disagree with you, I must not engage you. Uh, because you are part of a human uh, human race and you're part of the hemisphere and therefore um, your views must 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 um, contend. But what do you think? Why Biden didn't invite this country and Obama do that in the 
at the, this uh, summit in Panama? Well, the, the, the best person to ask this question will be President Biden. I, I, I can speak for him. Yes, you're right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but of course, you know, in, in this world, you know, sometimes um, um, domestic politics play um, and, be, and, and cause thing, decisions to be made, and we understand that. Um, but you're right, um, President Obama invited, and President Obama was part of the, of the engagement. And, 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 that's what, and, that, and that's what's important. The United States is a very important um, country in the hemisphere. One cannot deny that. And, and therefore, um, its engagement of all countries is important. And um, we hope that as time goes by, that th these approaches will change. Um, but we believe that um, the, the non-exclusion, non non-inclusion of these countries was, was a bad decision. Will you tell and of course, now, and as I said to our American friends, American friends leading up to the summit, that this is going to be a distraction. And unfortunately, um, it has come to pass that everybody is talking about the, the non-inclusion of countries, rather than the very serious agenda that's before us of the issue of the climate crisis that we're on, the issue of food the high cost of food prices and petrol and um, um, energy security. Um, what kind of hope are we as leaders going to provide our citizens in these times? Uh, because every one of our countries, our citizens are waiting for the outcome of, the, of these discussions. And if the outcomes are not going to uh, reflect their reality, then they would have deemed the, deemed the, uh, the summit uh, a failure. Um, so it's, 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 this is why it's so important for us to have everybody around the table discussing the issues confronting our region. Will you tell President Biden that? Of course, we, that's all one of the reasons coming here, and we'll respectfully express those views. Uh, we're not that we 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 not um, we're not uh, upset with anybody. Say we're here to discuss uh, as friends and in a respectful manner. Um, what's on our mind and, and what's on the minds of our own citizens. Because I'm here not to represent myself only, but to represent all my citizens. Um, and of course, to be part of the Caribbean uh, group of, of, of countries, leaders, uh, who are here to, to represent the interests of the Caribbean community. Finally, mi Prime Minister, I would like to, s to know if it's true or not that the United States have threat, uh, threatened uh, Caribbean countries to come here to the summit? Well, I'm not aware of that. So certainly Dominica wasn't threatened. So I, I can say very clearly Dominica wasn't threatened. Uh, we have always expressed opposition with respect um, and on a, on a principal basis. We made it very clear to the U.S. authorities. Um, everyone who had the opportunity to engage uh, leading up to the summit um, and now that their decision to exclude other countries was not the right decision to make. And also the decision to, uh, they, they wanted to include uh, Mr. Juan Guaido at the summit, and they made very clear that Mr. Juan Guaido is representing nobody in Venezuela. He was not elected by the people of Venezuela. And the constitutionally um, established president of Venezuela is Nicolas Maduro, which rec whom he recognizes the president of Venezuela. And it is against any democratic principle for us to recognize someone who did not contest an election. You know, in our countries, for you to be elected as a president or prime minister, you have to um, submit yourself to the, to the voters of this country. And it is the voters who decide, in accordance with the electoral laws, in accordance with the constitution of our countries, who is the president. And so we made it very clear uh, on this. So I'm not aware of any, any, any threats. We are small countries, but nobody can, nobody can threaten us. No. Uh, we respect people, uh, we respect the views, um, but we stand principle always. And uh, so our, our decision to come here is in our own volition and to speak on behalf of those who are not here and speak on behalf of our citizens whom we're representing. Thank you very much for Thank this you. opportunity. Thank you. And happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you. We thank our special envoy, Isa Garcia, who dialogued with Rusulf Skerrich, Prime Minister of Dominica. Skerrich stressed the need for unity in LATAM and the Caribbean and also rejected the exclusion of Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua from the ninth summit of the Americas.